I'm making this video for Andrew Scott. Um, anyway, Andrew Scott was a boy who was in my congregation. Basically, my daughter Leonie was abused by an elder's son who was a bastard. He basically, this elder had an affair with a woman and he was already married and he had a baby and I was babysitting that son a lot of the time. But when I had my own daughter, that boy grew up to a teenager and abused my daughter. So I moved congregation because they wouldn't give him in trouble. They just said he was just being a boy. But my daughter was having nightmares. Leonie never didn't have nightmares, right? And he really did abuse her badly anyway. Um, so I moved congregation to Cathcart congregation. And it was Bill Scott and his wife from Com Scott Computer Supplies in Cathcart. And... um. He, so anyway, Andrew was a lively boy in the congregation, like Isaac. Not, um, just, I can't explain it, like a, a lad's lad, you know. He wasn't like a staid Jehovah's Witness, he was always up for a laugh, he was cheeky, you know. And, but he was, so, he was just dying in that Jehovah's Witness environment, same way we all were. Anyway, um, not anyone that had a brain. So, Andrew, um... Some nights we went out as a big group with lots of people and his wife wasn't well or something and anyway he said to me he was so lonely I felt so sorry for him because none of them were being nice to him they were so horrible to him saying oh I wish he would die it would be quieter if he would die saying stuff like this about him right and um, I think he was a bit hyperactive because he was trying to fight off all their hatred anyway he said to me one night um, if we, if I wasn't married, would you ever marry me? And I laughed. I can't say yes, you know, because he's still married. Anyway, he just laughed back. And then he came round to my house one day, um, during the day. And I was, the girls were at school. And he was just popping to say hi. And I didn't invite him in because you're not allowed to do that, like, legally as a Jehovah's Witness. So, anyway, I told my mum. And she was like, don't ever let him come near you again. Because you'll ruin our reputation and I was like but he's lonely he's something wrong I can see there's something wrong anyway the next thing I hear he's gone off and committed suicide and they said he took a he went away up to some part in Scotland and put a tea towel in his car exhaust and they found him all black and his tongue hanging out but this was his family describing it to people in the congregation if my son had done that to himself, right, which never happened, could I describe that to someone else? Would I even want to know that information? Would I happily chat about that amongst the elders? I don't think so. And then, at the funeral, do you know what his mum said? It'll be a lot quieter now he's gone. You know, things like that. They must have got insurance money and everything. And it was just the same way Isaac died as well. He went missing. They disfellowshipped him, right? This, I think it was for drugs. But it was probably taking drugs because they just, they're so nasty in the congregation, right, to him. Because he was so handsome. You know, all every, all the children, the kids wanted him because he was such a handsome teen. You know, he, like he had his own following. So it seems that anyone's got their own little following, they want to kill him. Anyway, so it was the same with Isaac, you know. And they disfellowshipped him. So I heard from his wife Nikki or someone that he went missing so I said to my husband Thomas I'm begging you I have to go and look for him I don't care if he's disfellowshipped you know because the elders and my mum were saying don't you dare go look for him you're going against Jehovah so I went looking for him and, we, and eventually I found him or he came back to his house where I was there and I was like I was so worried about you Isaac and he's like don't ever tell me to go back to the Jehovah's Witnesses he goes look like because we were like brother and sister he just went, don't ever tell me. And he was trying to tell me, you know, he knows, because he was brainwashed as well, that if he tried to say to me, oh, Vonnie, these people are nasty, that, you know, they're going to try and kill you, just you have to get out. He knows I would have went back and told, because I was so brainwashed. Or I would have said accidentally, I don't know. And he would have got in more trouble. But he just, he was lying down looking at the telly and he just went, don't ever... And he's never spoken to me like that. He always hugs me when he talks, like, and when he has to tell me anything. And he was just like, don't ever, 
tell me to go back to Jehovah's Witnesses. So I was like, I was gutted and I was depressed and that was at the same time as I was feeling really depressed as well. And my mum took me back into her house. I was staying with my mum at the time. And my husband, I think, must have been looking after the kids. I know it's a weird situation, but anyway. So I was in the house on my own, my mum's house on my own, and my mum opened the door and I walked to the door to talk to her and she just said, well, I might as well let you know Isaac's dead. And I just dropped to my knees and I just was like, oh my goodness, that's Andrew, that's Isaac. And another boy had jumped out of a building from a top floor, um, a laden, I don't know what his first name was, something laden. And there was just one after another and, and it was like, these were the people that were, not laden, but they were close to me. Andrew and Isaac, you know, that Isaac was my brother, more than any of my brothers. And, um, but just thinking about it, you know, if I could go back before they were threatening my children and stuff, I think, you know, I would have started complaining, why are these boys killing themselves? It doesn't make any sense. Isaac is the last person who would ever kill himself. I think for one reason only is that he's got nothing to die for. You know, he's so handsome and cute and such a beautiful personality. Everyone loves him. Everyone accepted him. People were jealous, but I mean, he could have went over the other side of the world and made new friends. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, and the same for Andrew. I just don't, it doesn't make sense. And after looking at what they've done to me, and they've done the same thing to him, you know, Isaac had told me that his own mum made him sleep with him. You know, so all these things, I don't know if Andrew's mum did the same thing or the Leighton's mum's doing the same thing, but I know the perviness of John and Betty McVagin, you know, and that situation I was telling you about. So after all the things that they've done to us, the the Jehovah's Witnesses, their flock, I just think, did we, I mean, I threw that iPhone behind me in a pure rage, and when I went out, you know, I like, and when I thrung it, it knocked me and gave him a concussion, right? But the rage that these people put you under, because there's so many of them, and I'm in the same situation. I mean, I've got police, fake police, fake gas men, fake people, wherever I go, they follow me about, ushering me from one shop to another. If I try and stand and do anything in the street or talk to anyone, there's these fucking FBI agents that are ushering me on. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like I'm being followed everywhere, neighbours and all, fucking nosy bastards, right? So I'm just saying, like, you're bullying these people and killing them. And you're, you, you're sending them to insanity where you're, you're goading them so they'll do something to you. And it turns out they don't do anything to you, but they end up doing it to themselves. Which reminds me of, you know, it's like self-harm. You make these people self-harm because you're so nasty. And I'm just saying, you're cursed beyond belief. And the people that you're killing and destroying, the innocents, are blessed beyond belief. And no matter what you do, that's not going to change. You're all martyring bastards. All you elders, Robert Campbell, John Campbell, David Billingsby, Paul Douglas, you know, all you elders, Harry Smart, you know, Thomas Smart, you're all playing this game. All playing this game you think you can win. You know, and you haven't won. You've lost. I don't know why you still don't get to fuck.